Hi everyone, welcome to a very special um, colouring um, tutorial today. I'm going to be colouring this page here and I'm going to get started. This is a matchstick mouse, obviously Christmas page. I'm going to get started with my castle arts and then I'm going to explain to you what it's all about. So I'm actually going to grab a nice dark brown, the burnt umber, I'm going to do the outside of the background. I'm just going to get going because it'll take me a while to colour it because we've got a lot of background. So I'm just going to do a darker layer. Now Morgan O'Brien has been in touch with me and he's running a very special um, Christmas promotion for his new book. Now it's got a new Matchstick Mouse storybook out. It's, uh, I haven't got it. <laughs> It looks like a delightful um, story and it's called Matchstick Mouse Merry Little Christmas. Now within the book there are 15 images which have been coloured, it's a storybook so it's not a colouring book and each of the images um, features Matchstick Mouse and um, I think um, a, quite a lot of them, maybe 10, I can't remember for sure, are from Matchstick Mouse Christmas book. Matchstick Mouse Christmas colouring book, okay, and four or five, I'm trying to remember now, I haven't got it in front of me, are brand new images made for the book specifically. As a special promotion for the, as a sort of way of um, promoting the new book, um, um, Morgan O'Brien has released every page as a colouring page from the book, so as a PDF download. But, in order to find all of the PDF downloads, you have to visit the pages of the colourists that he has contacted, who all have the links to the downloads. Now this page is from the book, but I also, this is the download, which um, in my description to my video, you can get a link to this download page. Now the advantage in having it over the book is firstly, look at the sky. And you see it's not black so you can colour that sky whatever colour you wish which I think is interesting. My ink is also a bit paler than the ink there which means that the line art might not show up so much and you could might be able to fade that even more if you know how to do fancy effects when you print. I think sometimes if you put a draft copy it prints it a bit paler. I don't mind the line art so it's okay for me. Um, and um, the other thing is you can print it on a better quality paper because um, Morgan O'Brien's books are um, Amazon printed so it's just the Amazon paper. Now for me I'm okay with that because I just use a pencil. Um, it suits most um, pencils that I use so I'm happy but you can um, grab the download code from the description of this video and print out the page and have a go. So even if you haven't got the book, it means you can get that page, this page from the book. Let's try and straighten it out for you. Or if you do have the book, you want to have another go, or you want to print it on um, better paper, then you can do that. So it's all very exciting. Now what Morgan O'Brien has done is he has contacted um, a selection of different colorists and given each of them one of the pages from the book, one of the downloads, and the idea is it's like a little scavenger hunt. I'm going to Van Dyke Brown to do my next layer. I'm going to go over the top of what I've done and then fade it in a little more. So um, every, every colourist has got um, a link and you have to find them. Now he, I think, <laughs> he will help to guide you. So if you find him on Instagram, um, I will put a link. Um, so that you can um, find the right air and find um, where to look and uh, then you can visit all of the colorists and not only will you be able to watch their tutorials if they do one or look at their completed versions of pictures for ideas for your page and you'll be able to find all of the free um, pdfs to download if you have got this book and you're not interested in downloading firstly there are four different pictures so that aren't in this book so sort of exclusives that you wouldn't have otherwise which I'm gonna um, grab and I might have a go at at some point I'm sort of the reason I'm coloring in the book and not on my download is because I want to finish this book 
I've hardly started it. I've done about two pictures, but it's one of my um, books to finish for December. So I'm colouring in the book. I also prefer colouring in books because um, it keeps my pictures together in sort of context rather than I've got a folder of loose colouring like downloads and I don't really look at them you know it they feel a bit lost I don't know if that makes any sense anyway, I like I like books so anyway um that's the reason I'm doing mine in my book but um there's nothing wrong with doing that as I say the pdf has got the advantage in that the sky isn't coloured I mean some people I he actually ran a a um a little poll on his Instagram asking people if they preferred having the sky filled in or if they preferred to do it themselves and um, most people I don't I think it was quite close to be honest I'm trying to find a lighter brown um, I'm gonna use oops, the um, nope. <laughs> the terracotta light now I've got the 72 set of castle arts this is going to be my last um, color for the background so I'm going over this edge part quite hard just to sort of um, make it uh, burnish it a little bit, I suppose. Um, get the colours smushing together a little bit. And don't, they don't really because it's a, these are hard pencils, but, you know, just get it all working. And I like um, doing a brown background. I, I'm going to come back and do these stones. I've coloured over that one by mistake, but it doesn't matter. Um, I like doing a brown background because it's quite warm. And uh, for a nice Christmas book, um, I think it's nice to have warm colours. I also think this is supposed to be like a little burrow underground. I think it might be supposed to be mud. If you look at the picture on the front, you can see it's quite dark brown. The um, outside, um, it's darker than I've done it. I quite like it, slightly paler, you know, but uh, that's okay. So... I will share as well in my description as well as a link to the download to the book, to the storybook. I'll have a link to this book as well. So if you would rather buy this book, um, absolutely, you know, they're all available on Amazon. And although um, I don't know what the lead time is on them, though, because because they're sort of print on demand, I don't know if that take, means they take a little bit longer, but Amazon are usually quite good at telling you how long things are going to take to arrive. So hopefully um, you'll be able to see that. But you can always print one off and have a play with it in the meantime, if you've got a printer. Of course, this is the um, joy with print on demand. If you don't have a printer, you can get yourself the book. So uh, that's nice. So yeah, it's really fun to be involved in this little project. I think I'm going to go over here, do this bit. Um... And I know a few other people who have contacted me who are involved as well. So uh, I don't know who, I don't know everybody who's involved yet. Maybe by the time this video goes out, I will. But uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to uh, sort of getting my teeth into this book. Really, I've done a, as I say, I've done a couple of pictures, and uh, it's really fun getting into Christmassy pictures, and. Uh, what I like is that it's single sided so you can although the paper is quite thin and pens and the pens show through and um, I mean alcohol markers always will whatever however thick your paper did, well I'm sure really really thick paper but you know they will show through every colouring book but even um, water based markers will show through in this book and my gel pens and paint and things like that but because it's single sided almost, you've just got this, um, it doesn't matter. I always put some paper behind the page anyway. If I'm using wet media like pen or paint, I would uh, put a, I use a plastic um, laminate sheet behind just to really protect the page underneath. And then, um, and it does wrinkle the paper, but I don't mind. You know, I think it happens in every colouring book that paper will get wrinkled if you use um, paint. And I also notice when I use um, stickles, it wrinkles, but I used quite a thick amount, so there was lots of glue, but it doesn't matter. I don't mind. So, uh, But as I say, the advantage of the downloads is that you can print it off on a thicker paper, cardstock or whatever, as long as your printer can cope. And, um, and then you don't have so many problems. You could even 
print them out slightly smaller. You could take this image here and put two on a page and uh, make it into a Christmas card. If you put it that way round and half a page, you could then colour it and then fold it. And even though it says match tick mouse merry little Christmas thing, that's fine. Make it into a little Christmas card for people. You know, that would be nice, wouldn't it? I mean, I know it's getting close to sending Christmas card time, but you know, it, uh, you could uh, you could do a few if you wanted. Now, the, we've done this sort of brown burrow colour. So what that means is that when it comes to actually colouring mouse, um, we have to think about what colour to colour her because we don't want her to sort of merge into the background. Actually, in this picture, she's quite similar to the background colour. And actually, the reds stand out a lot, which makes it look more Christmassy. So, you know, you could get away with it, but I will probably make sure she stands out a little bit. But we'll see. So here, that's almost my final layer. I'm going to just tidy this up a bit here because it's a bit scruffy. Like that. And what I think I might like to do, because it's not very vibrant, I'm quite keen on putting some yellow on there, but I'm very aware that we have a star which needs to look very bright. Um, what I think I will do is use my cadmium yellow and then I'll decide about the star. We might do the star in more of a gold rather than a yellow, if that makes sense. So we'll see. But with this yellow on top of the brown, it won't look massively vibrant anyway. Look, you can see that it's not really um, massively bright, but I think it just warms the whole thing up. And I like nice warm colors. I think they look more attractive to me anyway. I like the sort of warm autumnal shades. So I'm really actually plastering this down quite hard. Because uh, I want it to be quite dark and nice. And then we'll get on to colouring all the details in a minute. But um, it is worth um, spending a little bit of time just getting this looking nice. Although I'm hoping, as it's background, it's going to sort of fade back and we won't really notice it that much. Sometimes people do the most elaborate, beautiful backgrounds and it can almost take from the foreground in that, um, you know, it overshadows it. And here I want um, pretty tree and mouse to be our sort of main, main elements that stand out. So the background is just going to sit back a little bit. Now if you want to do the uh, background much more quickly, um, a watercolour pencil or even a watercolour paint would um, be faster. I'm uh, not very experienced in those, which is why I stick to my pencils. I'm learning. I'm not watercolour paint. That's not. Someone offered to send me some free paint to try out a new range that they brought out and I was like don't think I'm the right person as tempting as it is to say yes to freebies I don't think I could give them a very um good review because I wouldn't have a clue what I was doing <laughs> but um, anyway I'm sure there's um there'll be people out there who they'll find who would be able to test them out for them um so that's fine but uh, it's nice to be contacted obviously and uh, noticed, I suppose. Right, we're nearly there. I um, appreciate your patience. Maybe you've skipped on the video a bit, I don't know. <laughs> I shouldn't give you ideas, should I? It's, uh, it's better for me if people watch it to the end and fully through. But obviously time is precious. But we're nearly there now. Now I'm thinking about colours on here. I want greens and reds, yellows, lots of Christmassy colours. What I think I am going to do is to actually do um, some of the brighter colours first and then see how mouse looks. We have got the window frame to do. I'm actually going to do that now. 
just quickly so that um, it's done or else I may forget. So I'm going to go back to my Van Dyke Brown um, which we used for our second layer and put it down. Now this is going to, I realise we've already used these browns so you might think oh it's not going to stand out but I think it will. Um, I've done this before coloured a lot of Majestic Mouse pictures actually. I think she's adorable and what I love is the fact that these pages can be done quite quickly. This is a burnt umber which means that I'm going to do all the edges in a really dark layer of the burnt umber and then just gently fade it in a little bit just to try and make the, um, the window frame look a little bit more rounded. Um, the joy of the book is the pages are quite quick to finish and sometimes I get great satisfaction from finishing a book or well, finishing a page to start with sorry let's do it that way around so you can see so I'm putting quite a dark layer here you see I'm layering up and then a bit less towards the middle and then it looks a little bit more rounded um yeah I love finishing books and pages and so it's uh that's what I like and I finished the autumn book and the Halloween book and the summer book. So I've got flip throughs of all of those um, somewhere on my channel. Right, we're going to do the red next. I think it's good to do some of the bits that are going to stand out because I don't know what colour to do these. Although we've got these stones to Anyway, I've got my red. I want to do some red. <laughs> so I'm going to do the hat in red. This is going to be white, but I'm going to show you how to make it fluffy later. Um, I have to leave that till last because it involves a pen and uh, I don't want to smudge a pen. So I'm going to put a layer of the scarlet red down here and here for the hat to start with. There we go. And then I'm going to grab a darker red. Um, I'm just trying to get it out, sorry. I've got a vermilion which is a bit darker and I'm going to add a little bit of shading, shadow I should say, to some areas so that I feel that the bottom of here might be a little bit darker. It doesn't really show up that much, does it? might be a little bit darker and maybe along here. I think I need a darker red. Hold on. Um, I think we've got, what's that? Yeah, we use the Indian red. That's a lot darker. We should be able to see that. Yeah, that's better. So use the Indian red along there. And along here. Like that. And then back to the vermilion. To take it just a little bit further out. And then end with our scarlet red just to do another layer over the bits that's only had one layer just to tidy it up really like that there we go so there's the hat she looks cute doesn't she now i'm gonna do a red ribbon and i'm gonna start this time with the indian red and mark out the areas i want to be darker now um We've already got this bit shaded in for us, so that's nice and easy. So I'm going to put a nice dark layer in there and there, because I think that's we're looking up inside the ribbon a little bit, the, the bow. And then I think this might be a little darker. I'm only going to put a lighter layer here and here, because I really want this bit to look really dark. And then a bit underneath and a bit from each of these like that. Then the back to our vermilion. So we're using the same three reds that we use for the hat. And just just extend down that red a little bit and just sort of fade it so that we can blend it nice and easily into the lighter one. Now if you wanted you could just use um, two reds, do a dark one here and then a lighter one for the rest. And it would still look really lovely and bright and Christmassy. But um, I like using a few. 
if I've got that option. Obviously depends on how many pencils I've got in my set. And then I'm going to go in with my scarlet red and just finish it off. So I want it to be nice and vibrant. But I still want to be able to see that I've got a few different colours. So I start by doing it darker here. There we go. Now, of course, you don't have to use these colours, but um, I do um, like a bit of red for Christmas. I know red isn't always um, used so much anymore for Christmas decorations and things. Now, this candy cane, it's got black and white. I want it to be red and white, not black and white. I'm going to try. Hmm. <laughs> no. Okay, the um, printed version doesn't have the black on it. I'm going to just do all of these with the red or else it's going to look a bit odd but you can't really see it. So I'm going to come up with a different plan for that that you'll see later. We'll do that, deal with that in a bit. Let's do these rocks in the background because I might forget otherwise. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just seeing what colours I've got. Um, I'm going to use action <laughs> so decisive today. I'm going to use my darkest brown, which is my burnt umber. I want to make them look round, so I'm going to make them really dark around the edge. Just layer that on over and over. Don't press really hard because this paper is thin. You'll end up poking your pencil through. Just be patient and layer, 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 and do less towards the middle of the rock and then it will look hopefully it's hard on the small ones like it's a bit rounded because you know it wouldn't be flat oh I nearly did that don't do that that's the that's the pom-pom on on worms hat sorry you probably can't see what I'm doing there There we go. Okay. Now, um, where should we go now? Let's do our greens. Let's do our um, garland. Now, hmm, having a little think. I know. I'm going to do a base of green. I want a bluey green. So I'm going to use my thalo green to start with. It's quite short, isn't it? and just put down a sort of medium layer so I'm not pushing down really heavily but I want a nice sort of layer of green so I can see it like that now I'm doing a flat colouring although obviously this is um, uh, what's the word um, bushy I suppose <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So uh, I want to put on um, the idea that it's, because we've got these drawn on for us already, I want to give a bit more of an idea that we've got um, um, pine needles, maybe it would be. I'm going to do the tree the same. So again, with the tree, a light layer of this all over. Um, oh, that, hang about mistake this bit I think is tinsel in there now if you've made the same mistake as me don't worry because I will find a way of covering it up so you can't see that that's stained green so I'm sorry that I forced you into a mistake but it will be corrected in a way that should work nicely so yes, that's tinsel. We've probably got some more. Oh, there's some more there, look. Oh, I'm glad I noticed that, though. We can have fun with that. So I'm doing this in a slightly um, liney direction or colouring because, you know, it's uh, we've got pine needles on our tree. So if we can see a few lines, it doesn't matter. Obviously, I want to try and cover all of it if I can. 
Yeah, our candy cane looks a bit odd, but it will work. I will get it to work. I've got, you see, some sparkly pens and some stickles. And I haven't quite decided exactly what we're going to do. But we shall be making it look very festive in a little while. But I like to start with my pencil base. Um, partly because I need to see what I'm doing. But also because I smudge gel pen everywhere. <laughs> so I need to um, do it last. Or else I get it all over my hands, all over the page. Big mess. I've learnt from experience. Okay, so there's our base of green, but we're going to go in with a darker green. The Viridian is a slight, a sort of darker version. What I'm going to do is put in areas where I think there might be shadow. Um, it's not really a lot here, and I'm going to put some lines in like this because you know, pine needles. I'm going to build them up a little bit. Can't do too many or else it'll end up just looking like you've coloured it all in this colour. But just take time to do a few. They don't show up. There we go. Okay, now in this one, I'm going to do it slightly differently. I'm going to put, I'm actually going to put in some shadows with this. So under here, where we've got a drawing of a bit of um, overhanging leaf here, or branch, I suppose, we put some shadow underneath like that. I'm just getting my fallow green and filling in that where I missed it. And the same underneath the tinsel, there would be some shadow. So I'm going to fill those in. It's <laughs> very loud chattering. Oh, going from next door. Let's, uh, let's resharpen that pencil. <laughs> I think I was pressing too hard. Luckily, I have got another one of these Viridians in a different Castle Art set. I think it... There we go. Um, I think it comes in, I can't remember which set, maybe the um, seascape, I think. Oh, I was going under here, wasn't I? Basically adding a little bit of shadow. It helps to add um, some interest and texture to the tree as well. And it's quite straightforward, you know. You don't have to worry too much about blending it in because it's, it's a tree. I'm going to put a bit under there though like that and then let's go under here a bit under this one so it takes a little bit of time but I think it's fun and worth it I think anything that involves getting, getting colour on a page can be a lot of fun but uh, nice and relaxing I think Christmas pages are quite relaxing too because I don't struggle to think of colour, what colour to use because it seems quite obvious. I'm going to put a few lines. On our tree. Like we did on our um, garland. Oh, I think I called it bunting. I don't know, anyway. I wonder who's got their tree up already. Let me know if you've got your tree up. We usually put ours up um, the first weekend of December. But I'm recording this a little bit early. I haven't got it up yet. But, you know, we'll see. Right. Um, let's do mouse. Um, how I tend to do mouse. Now, if you look at how Morgan O'Brien's done mouse, he does her with a um, darker fur a lighter bit in the face, a little white bit there, pink nose and ears and feet and tail. I tend to do a similar thing, but I don't always leave that bit white just because it 
if you leave things white it can sometimes just look like you've forgotten to colour it so I don't tend to do that. So what I'm going to grab for mouse is I'm going to grab the sepia because it's a, the only other brown I've got in my set that I haven't used um, that's a dark and I'm going to use that for these darker areas of fur. Now this is quite a reddish colour but I think it will work because it's nice and warm but it's not as red as the um, hat. And I'm doing a sort of up and down motion like this to try and colour it in the direction that I think the fur would be. Okay, just so we can, if any lines show, it just looks furry. I don't try and emphasis her fur like I did lines on the Christmas tree because it's already drawn in for us anyway. But I can just some lines. Now you could put a darker bit here, I think I will, just where the hat is overlapping. It might be a little bit darker there and there might be some shadow under worm. Just do a tad, not too much. I don't think there's a need to be too fussy. I've just realised that that is window and I haven't done it so we'll come back to that. I sometimes find this is the case with a, with many, many different illustrators. Sometimes I can't quite work out what's going on in the picture until I've done a little bit of it and then I might realise I've done a bit wrong or I've missed a bit or whatever. But that's fine. I don't think, I say I've done a bit wrong, I don't think there's a wrong way to colour. If you colour a bit in a different way to the way the illustrator imagined it, I don't think it matters. It should be about the process and the fun and hopefully um, most people don't get too stressed, they're just about doing it in a particular way, just have fun with it. So this colour has allowed her to stand out from the background a little bit, which is what I wanted. Just putting a little bit of darker colour there and under the head here. Now I'm going to go back in and do the window. I'm trying to remember how we did it. We used the Van Dyke Brown for the basic part of the frame. I'm actually just going to colour that bit because I missed it. Like that. And then the dark burnt umber, sorry, for to just make it look a bit more three dimensional by going around the edge. Oops, try not to um, interfere with uh, Mouse's fur. I think that's fine. Now for her. Um, sort of face. I'm going to use this colour. This is the yellow ochre light. Now I find this fur I want, I'm going to just use a round and round movement that's actually very similar to the yellow in the background. I'll finish it off and then I'll see whether I think it needs darkening up a bit so she stands out. I'm trying not to colour over her little tooth there, I think I did. Try not to. But um, don't worry too, I'm just going to sneeze, hold on. Right, sorry about that. <laughs> I thought I'd best not sneeze really loudly on camera. Ooh, it's a very sudden sneeze. So I'm doing a little round and round movement, hoping that it looks like short fur. I'm just going over it a little bit more, and I think the more I go over it, the more similar it looks to this, which is slightly unfortunate. But anyway... What I'm going to do is add a very light layer of a slightly darker colour. So I'm going to use the cinnamon. Now the cinnamon is quite ready orangey. I don't want it on too hard. So I'm going to do it really lightly just to darken up. Can you see how it's just getting slightly darker? I just want to darken it enough so that she um, stands out from that background. and do it evenly across her body. Let's do, we could make her slightly darker there. Anyway, let's just, just add it. Oh, my son just sneezed next door then. It's really loud, if you heard it. Now, the only thing I've noticed is the edge of her head comes here and then 
seems to stop there and put a little bit of shadow in under there. There we go. So there she is. Now we need to do her ears, nose and hand. We can't see her tail in this picture so we don't have to worry about that. Now I tend to go for a orangey rather than a pinky colour if I can. Um, I'm going to use the... Um, where is it? I'm going to try using the Flesh Deep from this set and see what it looks like. I'll do her nose. I can make it a little bit darker at the bottom. Yeah, it's a bit, it's quite peachy, isn't it? That's okay. Do her hand. A little bit dark. And then the ear. I'm going to do this a bit lighter. But I want it darker in this part. So I think that bit would be a little bit deeper, a bit more shadowy. And then a bit lighter. I'm just smoothing it out a little bit, making it a bit neater for my um, liking. To my liking, I think her hand is a bit too dark. I'm just going to erase it a bit. I don't really like it that intense. But there we go. Right now we have here. I think this is dung beetle or stag beetle. He looks like a stag beetle from his antlers. Now. Often I leave him like that. I don't always colour his stripes. But let's have a little go. I'm just going to grab the pencil I want. I need it quite sharp. I'm going to use the terracotta. And basically make him a little bit darker at the bottom. Lighter towards the top. So that he looks like he's got a little bit of a shine to him. I don't know if it will really show up because of his the way he's got so much black. But there he is. I just felt that he needed a little bit of colour. Now something we haven't coloured that I want to be red is, um, is Worm's Hat. So I've grabbed the Scarlet Red. I'm just going to do that. I don't think I'm going to do more than one colour on this. I think I'm just going to put quite an intense layer of red, really dark, just nice and cute. Now colour for mouse, um, sorry, colour for worm, I tend to use similar colour to mouse's ears and nose but I want it to look different. So we use the flesh dark, so I'm going to use the flesh light and I think that will look different. So, And also he needs to stand out from this background, or she, he or she, they. So need it to be the right sort of intensity of colour and I think that will do. I'm going to put a little bit more there where I think there would be a bit of shadow and just under here. She says just here and then does quite a few more bits. There we go. Now we're on to our fun decorations part. Now the first thing I'm going to do is the tinsel no is the star let's do the star now we need a sort of goldy yellow color for the star what i'm going to do is start with a brilliant yellow which is my brightest um color and do the bits that i think would be a little bit darker so we've got these lines drawn on for us to show us that there's a bit of shadow there i'm just going to fade that a bit and I'm actually going to use this around the edge of this one too and to just fade it in a little bit. This may not really show up because when we try and mix yellows, it doesn't always, you can't always differentiate very well between them. What I'm going to do is really fade this because I find blending yellow quite difficult. So I want to really reduce that layer like that and then I'm going to grab a lemon yellow which is very much lighter and do the rest and I'm hoping because I've been careful with my fading that it will blend and we'll see the difference in colour I can see that I hope that you can as well 
but I, you know, if this isn't terribly vibrant, it will be. Now, if you want a really shiny star, you can leave the centre white and it looks like there's more of a shine. I'm trying to fade it a little bit towards the middle by layering it more on these outside on the points and leaving the centre a bit lighter. But I've got a much easier trick to make it look really shiny. I'll show you that later. Now, we've got ball balls, as we call them here in the UK. Um, I think um, Americans, you just got them ornaments, and we've got the tinsel. You can do the ball balls in yellow. I was going to do the tinsel gold, but I can't because I've messed it up, so I have to do it a different colour. So that's fine. I'm going to start with the brilliant yellow, like I did with the stars, and go around the edge of each one like this and then gently fade it less layers towards the middle and leave a bit because we're going to use our lemon yellow again I'm going to do all three the same colour you don't have to um, I just um, want to keep it fairly simple really and I like I when I'm decorating my Christmas tree in lemon yellow I would really want to um just have a limited color palette I don't my Christmas tree is full of a mix of ornaments all different colors that I've been given or um, bought over the years I remember all of them all of the ones that were gifts who gave them to me and things like that so it's really special so it's just a mishmash really so you can see I've left them quite light in the middle to try and make them look like they're glowing a little bit. Now the tinsel, as I say, I'm going to do this in, I've got a red candy cane, but I'm going to do it in red. I don't want to introduce a new colour, you could use blue, um, but I'm going to do it in red just and it will hide this as well. So let's grab our scarlet red again and do a layer. This does look a bit of a funny shade with the green underneath, but it'll be all right. You'll see. There's a quick rough layer, but it, I'm trying to just cover most of the white, but you will see why it doesn't matter too much in a bit. Now I was going to do some shading on the candy cane, but because the bread doesn't show up, I'm going to colour that in a very different way, which you'll see too. I'm not sure what's going on there. I just probably mouse's body that bit, but never mind. And now I'm going to use the Indian red to do some lines, like we did on the Christmas tree and the wreath. I don't think they're showing up, but it won't matter. Show up there, it's because of the colour underneath. Just getting through and then we're nearly ready for our pen work, which is the bit that adds all the sparkle to the page. And I might use some stickles, might just use a pen, but I do have to deal with these white bits first. Now, in order to make white look fluffy I use a white pen I can't just put white pen fluff on here because it won't show up so what I do first is I take a grey pencil and I colour a light background in grey I'm, I'm, I'm going quite gently you can see it but I, it needs to be visible but not really dark and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going on the bobble as well. And on worm. And then with my grey, I draw in some fluff. This might seem very odd, but it just works. She says hoping she's not lying. <laughs> It's a year since I've done any Christmas fluffy colouring, so let's hope. And the same on our bobble. Now we're not going to see 
it's the overlap into that black, but that's it'll get there. Now I can't do them on one, he's too small. Whoops, I keep running my elbow through my pencils. Bear with me a minute. Let's just push them away a little bit. Just doing a bit there and under the ear. Okay, let me just see where we're at. Right, now I feel that we need some glitter pens. These are Jelly Roll Stardust glitter pens. You can use any glitter pens. I would try them out first to see what the colours are like before you use them, just to make sure you're happy with how they match in with what you're doing. I'm going to grab um, a red one, a silver one. I need a white, which I don't have here. Um, hang on, I have it in a different place. There is a stardust one and there is a white one. Okay, I'm going to start with the um, bunting up here. And I want a bit of green glitter in that. I didn't grab a green one. This is the green one from the Stardust set, number 727. It's quite light green, but that's okay. I'm just going to put a few lines in here. Now, you won't see them until they catch the light, but it will add a bit of glitter to our um, bunting. So I'm not going to keep tipping it up and showing it you, catching the light until I've finished, or else it's going to get a bit tiresome. Um, next, the hats. I'm going to use the Jelly Roll number eight. You can use, actually, I think this one is um, run out. I'm going to use my Posca white instead because I think that Jelly Roll's run out. And um, you need to add your fluff. So we just go over with white lines. Now it's key to overlap the um, edge lines. This is why they're useful if you overlap them it really gives the impression of the um, fluff you just keep going until you're happy and overlapping these lines really really helps as I keep saying I shan't keep repeating myself <laughs> just having fun you covering over some of the background with your white. Do the same here. You can overlap these into the black background a bit. Now you might want to colour over this black background with a... I've done it before in... I can't remember which one of um, Morgan O'Brien's books, but I did the background in a black glitter pen when it was a sort of night time. These are tricky because they should be so small. Um, so yeah you could do the background but I'm going to leave my background so now you can see although the hat still looks a bit grey we can see all the white fluff and what I'm going to do is wait for that to dry and do another layer so it can benefit from several layers but if I keep going over the top of what I've done it will just rub off what I've done so just wait for that to dry now the star I'm going to use this pen. This is number 700 and basically it's glitter glue. Okay, so it's a Sakura Jelly Roll pen, but it just gives us glitter when you when you cover come when you um use it. Really lovely sparkle. So I'm going to add and you can see the pencil right through it. So it's really worth um going, you know, making sure your pencil looks nice. And uh, then you can go over it with an additional shine. I don't think I'm going to go over the um, post part. Might look a bit odd though if I don't. I'm trying to get it even. It's quite hard to see. There we go. And it does make the paper crinkle a bit, even just with that small amount of glue. I think I am going to go over that. But I think it's okay. As I say, because it's single-sided and we need to have some glitter. It's Christmas. Or nearly. There we go. Do all of those. Now, the red, I've got a red pen. This is number 719. Now, although these are in a set, you can buy them singly, which is why I'm sort of telling you the numbers. So I'm going to do lines 
in here so it looks a bit more tinsely because it sparkles. You could use metallic pens if you don't have um, glitter or if you don't like glitter. <gasps> I don't like glitter. I don't like loose glitter, I have to say, it's so messy. But um, glitter pens. I find the Secura ones are very good for not coming off so much. Um, um, what other ones have I used? Um, I've used Uniball ones and Pentel ones and they tend to come off a bit. It's okay on a single sided page. If it comes off on the opposite page it doesn't really matter too much. Now I'm going to use this on my candy cane for the whole of the red bit. Um, it doesn't really matter if it comes off but if you're doing a double sided a book so you've got a facing page and the glitter comes off it can be a bit annoying but um, you know. Now I need my a silver one is this the silver one? I think so. I'm just going to have to scrub that. Yeah. So this is the silver one. It is number 744. I'm going to use it in here for the other bit of the candy cane. Now I have got um, I, um, videos on how to colour the candy cane so it looks shiny um, without using glitter, you know, with a pencil. Um, so you can do that as well. Now I'm going to use this silver on these um, snowflakes, stars, not sure. I'm being very careful to try not to smudge my pen. Now the other star I want to do in gold, um, glitter, why not? So I have a yellow glitter pen here, this is number 703. This one. You could do your star in this and not do any pencil, but if you go over your pencil with this, the yellow gel will just cover it over and you won't see what you've done. I'm going to go back to my Posca now and do some more white. I have to be careful because I still want to see some of the grey and black that's underneath so that the white shows up but it's nice to have a second layer so it looks really quite fluffy. If you do them in different directions, that helps. So don't do them all in the same direction and don't start them all at the same point. So don't do a row, then another row. Do it. Try and do it a bit more randomly. And I think that makes quite a difference. Now a finishing touch for the hat fluff, you could use a silver pen or a um, just a glitter pen to add just a layer of but well, I don't think I'm going to I think I want the glitter to be on the Christmas tree and decorations not on the mouse so I'm going to turn it to the light now so hopefully if you I'm trying to show up all the glitter as best I can it's difficult but uh, there we go, there is our um, picture. So as I said, have a look in my description, you'll find the link to the, um, oops, sorry, to the free download um, there. And as I say, you can print it, so you can print it smaller. So if it, this, a page of this size is a bit daunting for you, make it smaller, do two on a page, or just do one on a page, but half size. Make it, as I say, you can make it into a Christmas card. But also um, remember to um, go to Morgan O'Brien's page. I will try and find the link and pop it in the description if I remember. If I forget, ask me in the comments. So you can find all the other colourists that are doing this fun challenge and you can find all of the other pages and and just, you know, get all the downloads, watch all the videos or look at all the completed pictures and uh, have some fun. So thank you all for watching. Um, I hope... Um, that was fun for you. Um, I hope you enjoy your downloads if you do get them or the book. I have links to the books as well so you can grab those if you want to. But for now um, have a really wonderful day and happy colouring. <laughs>